Hey everybody, I'm Father Dave, out here uh, doing a little camping, doing a little overnight. My hair's all kind of crazy right now. So, um, making some sourdough pancakes, and uh, thinking about you guys online, uh, the hom so the homily that uh, that you guys got where I was talking a little bit about sports, a little bit about um, why men, why we get upset when... Uh, I'm just using my little cell phone here. Uh, why, why men, why we get upset when, you know, someone says, ah, it's just a game. All right, and, and trying to give, like, Father Dave's evolutionary psychology, like my, my little crazy uh, theory on that. So uh, when you go camping, and I haven't been camping in, I haven't been camping in a, in a while now. It's been, a, I don't think I went camping at all last year. So, like, when you get back out into it, you're like, ah, oh, I forgot this, I forgot that. So when I gave the homily in the parish, it was, for sure, it was better than the one online. Uh, because there were some other elements to add to it that just like make a little sense, and so um, I don't have to flip that just yet. So a friend of mine, she had shared with me an ex uh, an experience that women have that is like an equivalent. Uh, so I'll give a little bit of uh, Father Dave's evolutionary psychology to back it up. Um, I'm gonna have to flip that. Give me just a second. Okay, so um, so sometimes a woman will go to get her hair done. She'll go to the hairdresser or a hairstylist that she likes. Clearly, I don't go to the hairstylist. I go like, I get my hair cut like three times a year, maybe four if it's an if it's an Olympic year, right? Beautiful up here. Flip this around. See the sun and the canopy, the beautiful fall colors. Anyway, so a lady goes and she gets her hair cut, and um, but let's imagine, especially for all the fem the women we have out there who watch us, the females, uh, imagine that like. Your hairstylist like messes up your bangs or something. Like somehow she messes up the hairstyle, um, and you are disappointed in, in your hair, right? And you come in the house, and you're, you're like, and you. What do you say to your husband? Like you walk in and you like glare at him, right? Like he's like, "What's wrong?" And you like, you know, you point to your hair, and and then he says something trying to be helpful. Like when women say to men, "It's just a game." What does a man say? It's just hair. Is that helpful? I asked the Paris ladies, are like, no, <laughs> right? And then, then the guy, because, you know, we dig ourselves a hole. Then he tries to help a little bit more, and he says, well, it'll grow back. Does that help either? No, not at all. It doesn't help, right? You know, so most men, experienced married men, know not to say anything. <laughs> like, there are certain hills not to die on, and you're trying to be helpful. That is not helpful, right? And what's actually happening there? So I'm going to give again, this is Father Dave's evolutionary psychology. This is just a hypothesis that I have thinking about this. I'm going to take that pancake off there. I'll be right back. Okay, okay. One more going. That, that one just got a little bit, had been on there a little too long. Uh, and what do you have in your, uh, this is sourdough starter. I put it in an extra mason jar. And uh, I put in there a little coconut, some egg, some flour, and I grind up some einkorn flour, which is the kind of flour, the wheat that Jesus would have known in his time, because the kind of like the hard red wheat that we have today is not necessarily the wheat. It's not the wheat that they would have had back then. So I do emmer or einkorn every now and then. I have a hand grinder and grind it up at the parish uh, in the kitchen and put it in there. Uh, and some lime. I put a little lime juice in there. So that is got, so that's sourdough starter, coconut, lime juice, uh, one egg, um, emmer, uh, I think this is it. I used emmer. I forget now. <laughs> it's early and it was cold last night. It's 37. Um, anyway, let's get back to it. So, um, so women get upset when their hair is, uh, not good. Um, as I mean, anybody gets upset if they don't look good. So there's that, that's just human. But if they go to the hairstylist and the hairstylist makes their hair bad, they cut the bangs wrong or something, they come back looking like Cleopatra and they didn't want to look like Cleopatra. Um, or some, you know, Egyptian princess. Um, and they don't want to look like it. I mean, you know, sometimes it's great to look like an Egyptian princess or, or a prince, maybe, a pharaoh. What's happening there? And why, gentlemen, do your women overreact? Or at least not overreact. If they react strongly and that response is not proportionate to the thing, something else is up, right? This, this is like counseling 101. Or right? if you ask your kids to pass the potatoes and they freak out and they say, I don't want to pass the bleep and potatoes... Something's going on, right? Because that doesn't make sense. And if a woman reacts so strongly, something else is up. So here's Father Dave's evolutionary psychology. Which is what you saw me trying to tell you about with the Vikings. 
All right, so women, sadly, again, when we talk everything that we talk about on the weekend inherited into this. Women's lives were not their own. They didn't. They weren't recognized for the gift of who they are and their intelligence and their heart and their soul, and that they are co-partners with human with men in humanity in the world. Like men and women are equals. We have different responsibilities and different gifts that complement each other. We talk about complementarity, and it doesn't like, oh, you're so pretty today. Oh, you're so handsome today. We work together. We fit together in every way possible. And we're not meant to be alone. And, and we're meant to have each other's help and God's help as we take care of the world. Okay. But sadly, women were not valued for that. They were valued for you know, be able to produce children and uh, how they look. And women's w- women exist in a different kind of social hierarchy than men exist. And so they have all these ways in which you know they say words and what was the tone of a phrase that how you speak and how you comport yourself and stuff like that. All right, and there's not a whole lecture on that. But, so I think, so especially because in the ancient world, and, and these are like pre-conscious memories, I guess what I'm trying to say here first, is uh, I'm basing this on an idea which is proven in science that we have some memories from experience and we have some memories that are hard locked in our brain, right? So like if Cragley as a puppy was walking near the shed and some snow fell from the roof of the shed and, and, and hit her as a puppy, she may be tentative and scared around that shed because she remembers what happened to her. But we have some memories that has never occurred to us that is hard written in our brain, right? So that, like a mouse, I'm gonna have to flip that pancake again, just a second. All right, that actually looks pretty good. So a mouse is scared of the smell of a snake, even if it has never seen a snake, right? If a uh, psychologist, you know, uh, they put a mouse in a maze and they have cheese on one end and they put the smell of a snake somewhere else, it will run faster from the scent of a snake that it has never ever seen uh, than it will towards the cheese because it is written, it's like hard coded into the brain. Certain birds will migrate and they know where to migrate to, not because they've ever been there, because some memories are like, you get just in the package, right? So like my Subaru comes with some cup holders. It's just part of the package. And so we have some memories that are just like part of the package. Uh, I don't my tablet out here. Just use my telephone. I'm to get tired. Um, so women have this memory, I think, in their brains, sadly, that they are valued and they have a position in this like social hierarchy based on how they look. And if another female has made you look less in the in for how you think you look, right? So they've devalued you in your eyes and in the eyes of other women and in the eyes of potential mates and men. Well then that is a no no. Like that's a that's a wrong because you have just lessened that person and their ability to, to have security because Sadly, women weren't able to have security on their own. They had to depend upon men, and sometimes men's were, men were animals. All right, and so I think that deep memory is playing behind the scenes when a woman is so upset that hair, that her hair doesn't look as it should or as she desires it, and she looks less than she expected. And then when a man tries to be helpful and says just hair, he doesn't understand because men didn't have that experience. We were not valued for that. We were valued for, well, for hunting, fighting, providing, protecting, you know, obtaining food, the things related to sport, as you see now, not for playing sports, but what sports is like a trainer of and a remnant of, right? And so women have this experience uh, with a deeper memory and men have this experience. And like, I guess just to back it up a bit, because I didn't say this at the parish. Shut that off. All right, very good. So, like, for a dude, if your team loses, like, so the Vikings beat the Jets, my best friend, as you just heard last week or this yesterday, uh, is a Jets fan. If the Jets beat the Vikings, you know what that means? And what does this mean for your kids? If the Jets beat the Vikings, then that means every Viking fan has to take all the smack talk from all the Jet fans, and we can do nothing about it. If the Jets beat the Vikings, we, have to, we just sit there and take it. Oh, your team lost. Your team's stupid. And, like, it makes no sense. Right, like your kids, right? You know, your grandkids out there for the grandmas that watch. If your kid, grandkids' team loses to some other team, your boy, your grandsons have to take the smack talk of all their friends because their team lost. Well, why should they take the smack talk? They didn't play. They weren't on the field. They didn't throw the interception. They didn't cause the fumble. They didn't like kick in the wrong, you know, kick and miss the uprights or like whatever. Smack talk. If you think of that word, smack talk, we have to take the verbal abuse. 
from the winning team. And this is, again, relates to what you heard me talk about with, like, as men, if our chosen warriors lose to that other group of chosen warriors, well, then we're all, we all could be slaves. And if you're a slave in the ancient world, you were, you could be abused. Not everyone was, but you could be. Um, and so this is why guys are upset and, you, and why we think we just have to take it. There's no, it doesn't make any sense that like if someone does their job wrong, that I have to suffer because they did their job wrong. Like as if I did their job wrong, did the job wrong. And we have these deep memories that are leftovers from that. And again, it related to Jesus because Bartimaeus is calling Jesus son of David. He's not calling him Jesus of Nazareth, which is how you were referred to from your town or who your father was. So it's not Jesus son of Joseph or Jesus of Nazareth, like Dave from Jersey or Dave from Lakewood. Right, like, my hometown was Lakewood. Um, it's G, G, Bartimaeus calls him uh, Jesus, son of David. And so we go back to King David. David fought Goliath. David represented his tribe to fight the enemy, to save them from becoming slaves, right? And Jesus sets us free. So anyway, I didn't say those things uh, on the online video because I was still fuming about the stupid Vikings. Uh, Yes, the refs were awful, and yes, someone should investigate illegal gambling and, and all of that stuff. Um, but I was more upset with our own lack of discipline, our own stupid behavior that we should have gotten under control. And at times, we're like that with ourselves when we sin and we know we shouldn't sin and we whatever. And I cursed a ton. I need to go to confession and, and all that stuff. But, uh, and hopefully, I'll get there this Thursday. Thursday, maybe I'll see my buddy priest. Anyway. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in a little extra. I hope you're enjoying your breakfast wherever it is. And hope your teams rally. And I hope all your hair comes out beautiful and looks better than mine. <laughs> God bless you.